Hello, it's Marek. Welcome to M Drives and welcome to another video. Today I'm fitting dashcam to my Audi Q2. And personally, I think this is the best dashcam you can get for any car. And I tell you why just in a moment. So the perfect solution came in this box. It came from Fitcam X and what they came up with, it's a genius solution. So what they've done is they actually built in camera into rear view mirror casing. So when you install it, it actually looks like it's OEM. You can't actually see it. You can't see it from the inside because it looks almost identical and you can't really see it from the outside because it looks identical too. So it's a win-win situation for someone like me who doesn't want to have cables running around the windscreen, uh, doesn't want anything to be stuck to the windscreen because I just don't like when things doesn't look OEM. So as you can see, the camera records in 4K, but apart from that, it also records in HDR. And as you can see, um, it's a perfect fit. It offers super wide angle view, which is important when it comes to dash cam. It has a built-in G sensor, so it will save the video when you have an accident and it will prevent it from being deleted. It also can detect an incident uh, when your car, for example, is hit when it's locked and you're away. However, this depends on the type of the car. If your car supplies power to the rain sensor when it's locked, it will work. Otherwise, you would have to run a separate cable. I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm not sure if Audi actually powers the rain sensor when the car is locked, but we're going to find out. It loops the recording, so that's what every dash cam does. And it has Wi-Fi connection, which basically enables your phone to connect to it so you can actually um, see what your camera see, you can check the videos, download the videos and do all other stuff we're gonna talk about a bit later. Now, let's move on to the installation because I can't wait to fit it in. But before we do, let me show you what I received in the box. Fitcam Max included two pry tools, which will be very useful during the installation process, a manual with the links to the apps, a card reader with USB-A and USB-C, and obviously the camera. I also found a 64 gig card in it, which obviously will be very useful. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to remove this plastic trim because that's what we are going to replace. I'm gonna try to fit in that tool in here and yeah, it actually worked. As you can see, I think I'm gonna have to jump on another side and do exactly the same thing. It's coming off, as you can see. Okay, so it actually comes down like that. And now we can take off this part, which is pretty simple. And that basically exposed all the wires so we need to take out this wire at the top and then we can install our camera here, connect it into this cable and put everything back together. So I removed the cable. It wasn't as easy as I thought. Uh, I used the metal pry tool they supplied and actually that worked best. Um, so now it's free uh, and this is the cable which provides power to the rain sensor, we can put it into the splitter, uh, which will go here. You can hear the click. Now, this one will go back into that. Again, I've heard the click. And now this camera is connected and powered on. So the only thing to do is to hide the cables. So first I'm going to fit back this trim. Okay, that's done. 
Now the next step is to fit in the camera. And that needs to go in just like this, I think. Okay, that's it. Now it clicked. Let's do the other side. And it clicked in, perfect. So now that sits like it should. And it's all done. And as I said, it looks almost OEM. Apart from the slot for the micro SD card on the side and the two little buttons at the bottom to control the unit, yeah, it looks really OEM. So now I'm going to download the app and we will fire it up for the first time. So I've got the app now. What I have to do is start the ignition and that will power up the camera and then I will be able to find the Wi-Fi on my phone. Add camera. And the camera is working and obviously I forgot to take off the protective foil. Okay, so as you can see, this is the view from the camera. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, now, what the app is offering to us is obviously you can pause the recording, you can actually take a photo, you can go to camera settings, the camera settings will allow you to record different things like sound, it shows you the resolution, so you can actually record in 4K. loop records three minutes uh, we can actually extend it to let's say five exposure compensation that allows you to turn it down a bit i'm gonna leave it as default x timestamp yes we want a timestamp in there driving collision sensitive medium sensitive let's go with that Parking monitoring, auto power on and record the video once detect a collision when your car is off. Let's turn it on. Time lapse video five. No, we don't want time lapse. And that's pretty much it. So if we go to loop, uh, you can see all of the recordings in there. Snapshots, that's when you take a snapshot with your phone. Locked. That's when the file is being saved as locked during the incident. Obviously, we didn't have any. We can go to albums, nothing downloaded yet. We can also go to app settings where we can set the language, date, format, etc. Uh, we can submit the lock uh, and contact customer service. So that's it, the camera is installed and it's pretty easy to use. And that's what you really want from your dash cam. You want to install it and you want to forget about it. It's going to be there and it's recording the videos for you so you can use it when you need it. And apart from that, you can forget about it because it's almost invisible, certainly, Anyone else who will be jumping into this car, they will probably never find out that I have dashcam installed in my car. And that was the whole point of installing this camera. Have something which is invisible to everyone else but me. And to be honest, during the normal driving, it's gonna be invisible to me as well because I certainly gonna forget about it that it's even there. So to me, this is the best camera you can get on the market. So the only other thing to do is to test it now over a period of time. I'm going to download the footage after a week or so, check how it works, check if everything is fine. I'm going to show you to you in a moment and then I'll give you my final feedback, but I think it's gonna be a good one.
it has been exactly a month since I fitted the camera and now I'm ready to give you my full honest feedback. And the great thing I discovered is that Audi actually uh, provides power to the rain sensor even if the car is locked. So the function which I was talking about where the camera can be triggered even if the car is locked, if it detects a pump or some kind of movement, it actually worked. And I actually had to reduce slightly sensitivity to low uh, so it's not triggered by the wind etc. But I'm so happy it actually works because my car is mainly parked on the street. And you know, if someone one day passing like this will hit my car, at least I will have evidence and there is a big chance that I'm not gonna be paying for the repairs. Now let's jump to the quality because it's quite important. So I recorded in um, 4K majority of the time, but then I decided to test it in lower resolutions as well. And these are the results. I discovered that there isn't much difference between a 1440p, so 2.7K, and full resolution of 4K. Um, so actually, I set my camera now to record in 2.7K, which I think provides you the best balance between quality and the space the, the video actually take on the memory card. There isn't really that much quality you lose between these two resolutions uh, because you would need so much higher bitrate, like in GoPros where they record with 100 megabits per second or more to actually get amazing footage. The quality to me is at the level I expected from the dashcam. During daytime, everything is sharp and that's the most important bit. And even at night, the footage looks really well, actually much better than I thought it will because, you know, all of these little cameras, they have small sensors and actually you can't expect a lot, especially when it gets dark from a small sensor. And to my surprise, actually, it records really well. It looked almost as, as bright as with my own eyes and it provides a good quality enough to be able to you know, read the plates, etc. and to actually show what happened in the event of accident. It's not a quality of a 400 pound action camera, but it definitely is good enough for what you need from your dash cam. It also recorded the sound because I enabled that function. It records it in mono, but you can definitely hear everything. So if you need that feature, it's there and it works fine. And that brings me to the conclusion. Does this camera meet my expectation and would I recommend it to you? Absolutely. I think this is the best camera you can get purely because it's there when you need it. It records the footage. If you ever need it, you can download it, you can use it, you're safe. But in any other case, you completely forget about it because you can see it, your passengers can see it, and nobody else from the outside pretty much can see it because it's almost invisible. And that's the main feature of this camera. And that's the only reason why I got this camera because I just didn't want to have any separate unit stuck to my windscreen with any wires running around the, the windscreen going somewhere to the, um, to the power. So if this is important to you, I think you can't get better camera than this. So I can definitely, definitely recommend it. And if you're planning to buy this camera, please make sure you use the link in the description so I get a small kickback from it and you can support this channel um, that way. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you give it a like, you subscribe to my channel and I see you shortly in the next one. Goodbye. Do widzenia.